Hello everyone, and happy Independence Day to my American neighbors to the south. Today, we're doing a special edition of Box Breaks with Bruce. Today we're opening up a box of 2011 Topps American Pie Trading Cards. So this is a product all about American pop culture. 24 packs in a box, 8 cards per pack, there's supposed to be 3 um, relic hits, there's I believe one buyback card per box. Now what kinds of stuff can we potentially get? There's tons of autographs of various celebrities. There are costumes memor and uh, worn relics. There are coins, stamps, um, one of one cut autographs, serial numbered parallels. So many possibilities. It's a very interesting product. I got it at a very good price. I picked it up for just a tad over $100. Um, if you look at certain websites like DA Card World, boxes of this are going for about four or five hundred US dollars now. So you got a really good deal on it. Um, some pretty big hits, even just in the regular cards, can go pretty good money. The uh, Taylor Swift Kanye West card is pretty big. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what's in here. Uh, we might hit it big, we might hit it not so big, but again, I didn't pay $500 for the box, so it's not going to hurt that much. Alright my friends, let's get ready for box breaking. Alright. I am very curious to see what's in here. And I hope you are too. <laughs> so many packs. Okay. Okay. Alright. So. Packs are pretty basic, but uh, now let's let's take a look at what kind of stuff we get. I believe with certain memorabilia cards, there's only one card per pack, so if we get one of those, then uh, we will leave it be. Okay. So we have 1940s Hopalong Cassidy premieres on television. 1940s first instant camera. Jimmy Stewart in the 40s. We have an insert. Um. Hirsute history. I don't know what that means, but uh, 70s feathered hair. So it's a hair insert <laughs> uh, American top 40 debuts in the 70s Simpsons premieres in the 80s OJ Simpson found not guilty in the 90s and survivor premieres in the 2000s So as I said, this isn't sports. This is well There might be some sports, but this is just a mix of everything pop culture related 1950s First Corvette released. Very nice. Leave it to Beaver. The Fantastics begins in the 60s. Instant replays first use in sports in the 60s. 1963 apparently. Fads and fashions insert of lava lamps. Remember those? I remember that you used to get them at Spencer's Gifts all the time and now you can't find them because they're so tacky. Uh, last Harry Potter released in the 2000s. Bin Laden killed. And court allows home recording in the 80s, which changed everything in terms of evidence and law proceedings. Very, very cool. Uh, we got a relic. We'll leave that till the end. Okay. So let's go for that Kanye West card. Because <laughs> for some reason it goes for pretty big dollars. 1950s on the road. Rod Serling in the 60s, zip codes introduced in the 60s, and we have the peace symbol. A foil parallel, I'm guessing? It's not serial numbered, so yeah, the peace symbol. Cool. ESPN launches in the 70s, Ramones released their debut, Secretariat's Triple Crown, of course that's a famous, was it Triple Crown winner horse, yeah? And Giant Cash. I remember there's been some cards in the past which actually had uh, pieces of Secretariat's hair in it, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so the piece sign is actually a foil board parallel, so not a serial numbered version. Okay. So, so far this is very interesting. It's something so different than what I've opened to this point, so it's cool. Alright, 60s, the Fantastic Four debuts, comic book of course. Disneyland opens in the 50s, back to the peace symbol. We have Hollywood Walk of Fame insert of Marlon Brando. Had a few famous roles in his time. Um, one of the 
Notable ones, of course, being The Godfather, and then also Apocalypse Now. And there's also Island of Dr. Moreau, but we don't talk about that. A uh, Pale Blue Dot in the 90s, I'm guessing that's Pluto's discovery? Oh no, no, that's uh, the Voyager seeing Earth as a tiny blue dot. U.S. wins Women's World Cup in the 90s, the tragedy of September 11th and 2000s, and Jersey Shore. Yeah, <laughs> we don't talk about Jersey Shore. Even Americans don't talk about Jersey Shore. These packs are simultaneously tough and easy at the same time. Okay, let's pop it out from the top. Okay, World War II ends. Of course, that was in 1945, 1984 in the 1940s. <laughs> Catcher in the Rye in the 50s. Most boring day. Apparently, computer technology determined that uh, April 11th, 1954 was the most boring day in history. <laughs> Friendship bracelets insert. Remember those when those were cool? Commodore pet released. Early days of computers. MTV. Yeah, in the 80s before it became what it is today. And Atlantic City in the 70s. Duke Ellington in the 50s. So again, we're still in the heat wave, so the camera tends to overheat a little bit here, so bear with me, sometimes it loses focus. Pantyhose invent in the 50s. Bull invents smiley face in the 60s. It wasn't Forrest Gump. <laughs> Good, we have hirsute history, horseshoe mustache. Indeed. <laughs> America's bicentennial in the 70s. That was in uh, 1976, of course, in the movie Rocky, if you remember, they, uh, we're celebrating the bicentennial with the Apollo Creed Rocky Balboa match. Uh, Battle of the Sexes in the 70s, All in the Family, and Pac-Man in the 80s. Everyone who's anyone knows of Pac-Man. <laughs> okay, no relic. Good. There's one autograph I actually want to pull just for myself, and that would be uh, Chris Hansen from To Catch a Predator. That show has always been such a hilarious thing to watch. Sad, but hilarious. Um, Saturday Evening Post in the 60s. Gene Roddenberry, creator of Star Trek in the 60s. First color TV in the 50s, I did not know that. Oh, we have 1984, insert, numbered 53 of 76. It's the foil. Very cool. And then we also have the regular foil of the founding of Apple Computers with uh, Mr. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. A real world premiere in the 90s, Lance Armstrong wins 90s world tour, and YouTube launches in the 2000s. <laughs> this is an interesting product. I think ITG actually had a similar one for Canada called ITG uh, Canadiana, which was all about Canadian pop culture, but those are fairly tough to find nowadays, at, especially at realistic prices. <clears throat> Frank Sinatra in the 50s, first pager in the 50s. Young Marlon Brando in the 40s. We have Walk of Fame insert of Mr. Frank Sinatra, old Blue Eyes himself. <laughs> First handheld cell phone in the 70s. Imagine walking around with one of those in this day and age. Oh, you <laughs> be the laughing stock, but back then you were a god among men if you had that. Rubik's Cube in the 70s. Best part about that is actually a person of Hungarian descent. Um, as it says right there, Hungarian sculptor Erne Rubik created it. So that's something I'm particularly proud of as a person of Hungarian heritage. Freddie Mercury tribute in the 90s, and Y2K dud, new millennium. Anybody who was born and active and, oh, and conscious around that time remembers uh, Y2K, how it was built up as this thing that's going to end society, and then it came and, well, nothing happened. But we were all so scared. Right, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Scrabble was made in the 50s. A Charlie Brown Christmas in the 60s. Uh, Johnny Carson takes over The Tonight Show. Fads and fashions. Pogs in the 90s. Remember Pogs? Those used to be badass. There used to be hockey versions, all the sport versions. I remember when I was a kid, I had Gargoyles uh, versions of these. It was pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. Actually, there's some people still collect them, and some of them have pretty good value. So, huh, yeah. 
Facebook founded in the 2000s, the double-edged sword, is both good and bad, Enron bankruptcy, and Mr. Rogers. <laughs> there's a meme I remember that was saying there's like the holy triumvirate of, of people representing the good things in life. There was Mr. Rogers, there was uh, Steve Irwin, and there was Bob Ross, the sort of holy triumvirate of, of good people. Uh, oh, oh, is this one card? Yeah, it's one card pack. Okay, we'll save this till the end. See what's awaiting us in that pack at the very end. A cut autograph would be just sweet. Donna Reed in the 50s. <laughs> the Edsel flops in the 50s. Uh, sucky cars. James Dean dies in the 50s. Of course, uh, there's rumors that his car that he used is cursed because apparently everyone who's owned it since has had misfortune befall them. First push button phone in the 60s. Remember, it used to be the rotary where you just do that. Yeah. World War II ends, foil board parallel. Very nice. <laughs> Doom released in the 90s. I remember when that was the coolest. Still cool, but uh, it's kind of archaic. Fun fact about Doom, it was actually designed in 2D and then it sort of translated into um, into the images we see on the screen for the first person. So it's pretty fascinating uh, use of limited technology from the era. You could actually fit it on a calculator now and that was like badass game back in the day. The Brady Bunch in the 60s and Apple founded in the 70s. Jackie Gleason in the 50s. TV dinners in the 50s. Of course, I'm guaranteeing the quality of those dinners back then were way more wholesome and less sodium-y than they are nowadays. Today show debuts in the 50s. We have Hirsute History, The Goatee. Yeah. Yeah. Seinfeld premieres in the 80s. The Unabomber arrested in the 90s. Martha Stewart indicted in the 2000s. And Bernie Madoff arrested. I hate when I can't see what I am hitting in the back. Okay, just regular cards. And again, as I said, they're easy and hard at the same time. Okay. Peanuts debuts, of course, that's Charlie Brown and Snoopy, and Woodstock, the Emmy Awards in the 40s, Volkswagen Beetle comes to the US in the 40s, the first ATM in the 60s, Fads and Fashions, Texas Hold'em, Poker, in the 2000s, I remember, thought that it's still popular, it still makes good money for everyone, but yeah, I remember when TSN and ESPN used to just air poker tournaments all the time. Oy. Baby Jessica. Fallen into a well, apparently. I hadn't heard about that. Calvin and Hobbes in the 80s, and Route 66 decommissioned in the 80s. Huh. Interesting stuff. Okay, we have Grace Kelly in the 50s. Orson Welles, his famous radio broadcast in the 50s. Alfred Hitchcock, the king of suspense. Hollywood Walk of Fame of John Lennon. Imagine all the people who shot JR in the 80s, yeah? I believe that was what Dallas was the show? Yeah, Dallas. See? I'm not even that old, but I still remember these things. The Muppet Show in the 70s, World Trade Center opens in the 70s, and Sesame Street in the 60s. Huh. Well, I hope for my American viewers you're enjoying this episode and brings back some nostalgia for y'all. And if you uh, aren't familiar with these stuff, hopefully you're learning something because it's interesting. Warhol soup cans, some pop art for you. Lenny Bruce. Apparently a comedian, I didn't know that. Hot Wheels in the 60s. Hey, there we go, we've got a foil parallel of Doom. John Belushi, the funnier of the two brothers. Of course, you're most remembered for Blues Brothers and Animal House before he passed away way too young. Atari 2600 is released. CNN launches in the 80s. And the We Are the World concert in the 80s. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. The Guinness Book of World Records came out in the 50s. The first transistor radio in the 50s. Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. We have Hollywood Walk of Fame insert of Grace Kelly. Tear down this wall, Mr. Gorbachev, said Ronald Reagan in the 80s. That's, of course, referring to the Berlin Wall that separated East and West Germany. 
Titanic, the movie, of course, in the 90s. First iPod released in the 2000s, and Michael Phelps wins eight golds in swimming. <laughs> Opens fine, but okay. So I don't know how many autographs we're supposed to get in the box, but there's, of course, three memorabilia, and I have two off to the side so far. So world's first remote control in the 50s. Imagine that headache today, having to get up, go to your TV, change the channel. Hey. Grady the cow in the 40s. What the heck is this? Became wedged, I've heard. Okay. 1940s, aliens are a mess. That's, of course, the Roswell incident in New Mexico. The bikini in the 40s. Ooh la la. <laughs> Hypercolor shirts in the 90s. I, I don't remember that at all. Uh, Hurricane Irene. The first windows in the 1980s. And Live Aid concert in the 1980s. Okay, we got another memorabilia. Put that aside. We'll put that. We'll put the really thick one that we got at the very bottom. Good, so we have our three memorabilia cards now uh, off to the side. Everything else now is inserts we're waiting on. I believe there we should get an autograph and also um, there's one buyback card set in there. I don't know what that is, but it should be cool. Uh, Motown Records found in the 50s. First birth control pill in the US was in the 60s. Jeopardy in the 60s. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Disneyland foil board parallel. Roots in the 70s. I believe that's the TV show. Yes. With uh, LeVar Burton, I believe he had the key role in that. First UPC scanned in the 70s. And John Lennon in the 70s. Of course, he was in the Beatles and he was uh, murdered by a fanatic. Of course, calling yourself a fan in this day and age, as, as a fan in general of, say, a sports team or a person, actually derives from the term fanatic, but uh, there's, in my eyes, a difference between being a fan and a fanatic where you're a little bit overboard, but okay. Jimi Hendrix, very nice, in the 60s, the Jim Henson Company in the 50s. Vincent Price, the very spooky dude in the 50s. Walk of Fame of George Burns, his token cigar. We have our buyback card, which is a Mork and Mindy card. A Mork and Mindy buyback. <laughs> cool. Michael Jackson's Thriller. The Oprah Winfrey Show. And Kurt Cobain Suicide. The lead singer of Nirvana, I believe it was with a shotgun. As sad as that is. Remember, if you ever need help, you ever need to talk to someone, there are plenty of places to reach out to, plenty of phone numbers, a suicide hotline prevention. Look out for yourself. Never ever feel that you're so low that uh, people aren't there for you. But Humphrey Bogart in the 50s. The first NASCAR race held in the 40s. Look at that. <laughs> I was going to say junker looking cars, but eh. cool. The Hell's Angels found it. Not commenting on that. Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. We have fads and fashions. Coonskin caps in the 1950s. Going for the uh, Davy Crockett look. Yeah. Napster debuts in the 90s. Gold virus, <laughs> viruses galore. Human Genome Project in the 2000s. And Obama elected president in the 2000s. American Bandstand in the 50s. Elizabeth Taylor in the 60s. To Kill a Mockingbird in the 60s. Hollywood Walk of Fame insert of Douglas Fairbanks. Steve Jobs. 1955 to 2011. <laughs> Tetris in the 80s. Made by a Russian programmer. A derivative of a game over there called, I believe it was Tetrominoes. New Coke, the epic fail and the Walkman released in the 70s. Okay, the final regular pack before we move on to our three relic packs. Cary Grant. The Godfather is published in the 1960s. Hank Williams in the 50s. Spencer Tracy, not familiar with that. <laughs> the Brady Bunch foil <laughs> parallel. Christopher Reeve, a very sad tale about him. 
died too soon, suffered a horrible injury in the early 90s there, falling off a horse, became quadriplegic, was a huge advocate of stem cell research, and unfortunately passed away from that. Um, can't remember what year. Uh, Wheel of Fortune in the 70s, and The Price is Right in the 70s. Okay, well, let's see what kinds of relics we're going to get in here today, my friends. So, we'll just kind of get this card to the front. Okay. The Happy Meal came out in the 70s for the first time. Those were always the best after school, getting taken there by the family. And, hey, you get your little cheeseburger and fries and you get a little toy. <laughs> Dr. Seuss. We have her suit history, the bob haircut, and how is this? Okay, we have John Wayne, Hollywood Walk of Fame, commemorative star patch. Numbered eight of 50 of Mr. John Wayne. Hello there, pilgrims. <laughs> Very cool, it's interesting. So obviously not game used or movie used, but still. John Wayne, pretty cool. Okay, and on to our next, this is the for other regular memorabilia. Got a little foil piece that just came with our fingers. This one's a little bit thinner, so I, again, I don't know what to expect. Don't know what any of the, really what any of the hits are. Okay, we'll get this guy, perfect. Nancy Kerrigan attacked. Luke and Laura, Marion G.H., 1980s. So, soap opera, okay. <laughs> Doomsday Clock is set in the 40s. Of course, you remember those are the ones that goes two minutes to midnight, Iron Maiden. Um, various minutes to midnight. I can't think the closest we ever got was one or two minutes. Death of a Salesman in the 40s. We have Spencer Tracy, Hollywood Walk of Fame insert, and we have Louis Anderson, Celebrity Worn Memorabilia. Hosted the uh, Family Feud. He was in Coming to America as the lettuce washing guy. <laughs> what kind of thing is this? Um, yeah, it doesn't say what it exactly it was. Probably a suit or something. But okay, pretty pretty neat. All right. And then our final. It's literally just a final card. It's one in the box. Oh no, it's two in the pack. Okay. Yeah, we have. Bob Hope, Walk of Fame, and we have Lewis and Clark, Clark Trail, Authentic Memorabilia. Some gravel from it, from the Lewis and Clark Trail. Huh, so you get dirt in a, in a card. It's interesting, because I remember I uh, got a uh, uh, piece of the Berlin Wall card from previous edition of this thing, the 2001 version of the product, so it's pretty cool. A little bit of gravel from the trail. Authentic Earth, it says. Huh, very interesting. Urbe bobblehead of judgment isn't gonna really render much judgment because this isn't sports and it's just so different a product. But uh, I don't know, I had a lot of fun. This is pretty interesting stuff. Happy Independence Day to our American followers. We don't forget about you guys and your holidays as well. Of course, we had Canada Day on the first. I had a lot of fun with this break and I hope you enjoyed seeing the various different types of cards that we pulled here today. Until next time, my friends, have yourselves an excellent day. Bye-bye.